Well, uh, good morning, church. Uh, my name is Dan. Um, my wife and I have been going to church here for 14 years, um, and it is an honor to be asked to come up here to share uh, some thoughts on communion with you. But first, let's go ahead and pray. Um, so join me. Lord, we thank you so much for the chance that we have to be here together as a, as a group, as a family of believers. We thank you for the opportunity to sing praises to your name. We ask that you would uh, be with us as we think about communion and uh, share that together. We ask that you would uh, find us here and remind us why it is we do that in the first place. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, speaking of prayer, I've been thinking a lot uh, on what I pray for and why I pray for it, right? And then how have those prayers changed over the years? Because I don't pray for the same things that I used to 10, 15, 20 years ago, right? Um, when I was younger, I used to pray a lot for wisdom and discernment because I was pretty sure that I did not have those things, right? And if you rem remember me, if you've been here long enough to know me from 15 years ago, you would probably also agree that I did not have those things. Um, and wisdom is a good thing to pray for. In fact, I think we should still pray for wisdom and discernment because I don't think, you know, life is not a video game. You never level up and then you've attained everything that you ever need from that point on. It just doesn't work that way. I don't think anyone would ever say, yep, I have enough wisdom and I don't need any more. Because if they did say that, they would not be very wise. Um, yeah. Uh, but as I've gotten older, I've started recognizing uh, that wisdom all by itself is not enough to produce a life that is God-honoring in its righteousness. I mean, after all, Solomon's wisdom, the scripture says, exceeded that of all the men in the east and of Egypt. And if you know anything about how Solomon's life ended up, you would say it was a complete train wreck, right? So just being wise itself wasn't enough. And that happened to him because I think he lost the proper perspective on all of those things. His wealth, his comfort, his desires, all of those got in the way of what he knew to be true about what God wanted for him and for his life. How much more then do we need the reminder of what our perspective should be? See, I know it doesn't actually feel like it all that much when you go to the gas station and you dump a hundred bucks into your gas tank every single time you go. Um, but you do live in the single most prosperous, wealthy nation that has ever walked the face of the earth, and it's not even close. Just by walking into a room and turning on the light switch, opening the fridge, um, getting a glass of water from the faucet and taking a drink out of it, flushing a toilet, you are now more wealthy than every single king that has ever been mentioned in the Bible. All of them. None of them could do that. Think about that for just a little bit. But what is a proper perspective? See, to me, I think that's what communion is all about, the whole point. Christ commands us, as you've all heard the phrase, do this in remembrance of me. But what exactly are we remembrancing, if that can be a word? Well, his life and his sacrifice, obviously, right? But why are we remembering it? Well, because it reminds us what is most important. It grants us perspective. And that perspective is one that should correctly see me in my place and the king of the universe in his. If the all-powerful king of the universe died so that sinners like me no longer have to be enslaved to our own sin, then what am I doing with that knowledge? How has my life changed because of what I know to be true? Where does my life continue to need changing? Because I guarantee you it does. What keeps me from making those changes? See, I don't think it's actually possible to be wise without that perspective. I don't know that you can do it. Solomon tried. He had all the wisdom in the world and without perspective ended up not being wise at all, right? When you look at how his life ended, it was a complete disaster. Um, hopefully none of you have lives that are that bad off because that's um, pretty awful. And I don't think wisdom on its own can produce a life of you know, honoring God without that perspective. So I'm going to ask the servers to come forward, um, and I would strongly encourage you to analyze yourself. Who are you? Are you the person that seeks to make Christ's perspective on life, on sin, on salvation, and on eternity your own? Are you actively trying to ensure that your priorities in life line up with Christ's priorities for your life? 
Or are you denying Christ's lordship over some aspect of your life? Use this time to remember Christ's sacrifice. Remind yourself who you are and who he says you are as his son or daughter. Um, and you've all heard the passage. You all know exactly the story. You know that Christ has sat all of his disciples down in a room, and he's telling them the last things they need to remember before he goes. And it's interesting that what they need to remember isn't really all that hard. Remember who I am. Remember what I did, and remember what that means for you. Oh, that seems easy enough, right? But I think that's a call to, to place perspective, to, re, um, to remind yourself of where you are in the world and what's most important, where you need to be focused on. And, um, and I think it's a great chance for us to just analyze what's going on, how am I doing, and how have I forgotten maybe the things that are most important and give me a chance to line back up. So Luke chapter 22 says, when the hour came, he was reclining at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he said, take this, divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until the kingdom of God comes. And then, if I can do it, he took bread. Uh oh. Sorry, Skylar. All right, there we go. I got it. Um, he took bread, which had been given, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, and he said, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and pray again. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come before you to worship and honor you as King and Lord and Savior. We pray that you would renew our hearts, that you would remind us who we are as sons and daughters. We pray, Lord, that you would grant us your perspective that you would give us the desire to align our priorities with yours. And Lord, we ask that if there is any sin or anything that we've refused to allow to come under your lordship, that you would reveal it to us and give us the will and the strength to offer even that to you. May you bless the rest of our Sunday and the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.